This is a volume integration problem and it's out of the section of solids of revolution. So what that means basically is that we have a function like we have here. y equals the square root of x. And what we're going to do, we're going to take this function and in our case we're going to revolve it around the axis x. And once we do that, this is what we're going to get. It's going to be a cone type of shape, which uh, the bottom is a circle and it's going to get thinner and thinner as it gets to the top of it. And we're going to place its top right here at point O. If we take a look at our function, y equals the square root of x, this would just keep going and going and going. But the problem tells us that we are interested only in x from 0 to 4. So therefore we simply cut it off right here. And this section we don't care about. So what we have here, this is what we're going to turn around the x-axis. And as it would move, it will display a nice circle and get this volume for us. Now we're going to use a, an integral to calculate the volume of this shape. First, in order to do that, we're going to draw a cross section somewhere along this shape. And I'm going to pick right here. This will be a thin disk with the thickness of dx, which is an infinitesimally, infinitesimally small uh, distance, which will be located at distance x from point O. So this distance is x and this distance can go from zero all the way till we get right here to point number four. So this is our distance that we are working with. So this is the integral setup that I'm going to be relying on where the volume equals the integral of the cross-sectional area which we mark right here, this disk, times its thickness, which is infinitesimally small, and the value of the limits, which is a to b. And for that, uh, our a is going to be 0, and we're going to go all the way till 4. And 4 is going to be our b, our upper limit. So let's go ahead and uh, start plugging in. Equals the integral, let's say our cross-sectional area. As we can see, that is a circle. So the area of a circle, I'm going to put it right here, equals pi r square. Now pi for us, it's a constant, we don't have to worry about it, and r. Now what would be our r in this case? Let's uh, take a look here at point 4. This is pretty much a cleaner, clearer area where I can draw it. So the r for this circle would be from the x-axis all the way up to our function, where our function is. So every single disk that we would pick would have an R that would go from the axis all the way till it intersects our function. So either at 4 or here somewhere or at x or close to 0, it, the radius is always from the uh, x-axis going to our function. So basically that's uh, given for us, which is the distance here is y equals x, uh, square root of x. So for the value of 4, we have all the way up here, and y will give us the value of our radius. So let's take this radius and plug it in here, square root of x, and the formula for the area says that it's on the square, so we're going to put it on the square. The dx will come down the way it is, and there you go. My limit is 0 to 4, like we said. It starts here and goes all the way till 4, like our problem asked us to do. There you go. This is pretty much the setup that we needed to do. Now we're going to go ahead and solve the integral. If we take a look, we can see pi. Pi is a constant, so 
we can simply bring it out of the integral 0 to 4 square root of x on the square so the square with the square root cancel each other so all we're gonna have is a simple x and now pi x square over 2 and plug in for the limits of 0 to 4 equals pi multiplied the 4 we're gonna plug it in right here so 4 on the square over 2 minus 0 on the square over 2 and with a calculator we can find that the value is 8 pi or 25.13 whatever the unit was here let's say if it was meters then it's gonna be meters cubed and there you go.